get the little celebration. So this is this is what's fun because I saw this on tape all the time. He he did the celebration all the time where he's like coming here, and I didn't I didn't understand what it was. So I like put him on the spot, and he said it was that he he had the guy strapped, and it was like him simulating putting a seatbelt on. So <laughs> he's got him locked in. Hey Browns fans, welcome into another edition of the Browns Breakdowns. And as you can tell by our glorious hoodies, we're talking defensive backs, and that means we're talking about the first pick the Browns had in the 2022 NFL Draft, MJ Emerson. And who better to break it down for us than our guest today, defensive back coach and pass game coordinator on the defense, Jeff Howard. And coach, MJ Emerson brought into this program, and now this is a guy that joins a very talented DB room, a very talented corner room, talented safeties, the back end, returning a lot of guys, but he's a fresh new face. We're excited to get MJ here. It's been uh, just being able to work with him the last couple couple weeks has been a real joy. You know, he's really locked into the process, uh, comes to work every, every single day, and kind of has seen the the way our room is and kind of the way things work out, kind of the culture that's in is just kind of fit his way into it. So it's been it's been fun so far. All right, so on Brown's Breakdowns, we're going to go into the film room. So what we're going to start off by doing is taking a look back at what he did at Mississippi State that made him an attractive draft prospect for the Cleveland Browns. So let's get into the film right now. All right, here we go. Mississippi State, Alabama. We're going to look at a couple of plays now, Coach. And, you know, you like to look at them against the competition that they're going to see at the next level. And there's plenty of that with this Alabama team, obviously. Couple of things. First one, situational awareness, and then his ability to close and tackle. And then we're going to see him get sticky on Jamison Williams, who was drafted early in this year's draft, despite coming off of a knee injury. But when you put plays on like this, what do you see from MJ? What do you like about what you yeah, see? You you spoke on it. Uh, just having the, the you know the context of the situation, understanding what it is. So we're sitting here. We're at third and twelve. It looks like we're in a, a too high concept quarters concept where where it looks like MJ's reading number two. All right, what we're calling number two is the guy on the hash. That number two runs this outside release. He's going to fall off and go into a, a sort of a cloud situation. So it's being able to see through two to the quarterback. Basically, what he does in this situation is off of his release, he may or may not be man on this guy. He come, uh, Number two comes up here. He's to the flat. Um, he ends up falling off, and now the safety is going to end up topping one. And he's able to see the quarterback throw, all right? So as soon as front hand's off the ball, all right, we're already triggered into our break. And then you like to see how do they handle contact? Like, are they, you know, when it comes to tackles, are they reluctant? Do they like it? You can see, like, MJ's going to come up here and, and attack this tackle and uh, be aggressive. And then just competitive, you know, competitive character, you know, even just this stuff, like playing with some energy. You know, we want our guys to play with, you know, that type of energy, um, enjoying the competitive process. You know, something that we work every day is our footwork and our transitions, uh, change of direction stuff. But he has very clean feet for someone as big as and as long as he is. All right, we're going to take a look at another one. We saw his abilities in a zone concept, and now we're going to see him man-to-man -man locked up with Jamison Williams, who was taken off the board in the top 10 in the NFL draft this year. Great vertical speed, giving him a little bit of a cushion here. What do you see about his ability to kind of mirror this route and then close, break up the ball, and then strap him in? What gives players value is when you can put them in these situations where they're one-on-one -on -one and they can win when they're one-on-one. -on -one. And so... Up here, he's uh, off and inside, probably because he knows he's pro he's not going to get a whole lot of help from the safety. Now here, what I think what what you like to see um, in, in DBs is when they're playing off, um, are they still able to contest short and intermediate route cut concepts? And that a lot of, has to do with the tempo uh, of their pedal. Um, and really their confidence, confidence in themselves to be able to contest those. We don't want guys that are going to play soft and off here and only be able to um, defend like routes down the field. We want guys that if they're going to be able to play off, that they're going to be able to get sticky at, at these intermediate routes. And I think that's what you'll see here in this clip. So he lets him take his cushion a little bit and then is able to break, right? Stays on the hip. And I think that's something 
um, that we talk about with the finish is you don't want, like this guy, you can tell the receiver he's trying to pivot away from him. So if you have poor eyes here and not understand the situation and you're looking for picks in a man-to-man -man situation, these quarterbacks are too good. They're going to throw the ball away from you. So you got to stay close to the man. Once you're close to the man and you get an in-phase position, now you can peek for the ball and now we can contest it or knock it down. And then there you go, get, get the little celebration. So this is, this is what's fun, because I saw this on tape all the time. He, he did the celebration all the time where he's like coming here, and I didn't, I didn't understand what it was. So I like put him on the spot, and he said it was that uh, he had the guy strapped, and it was like him simulating putting a seatbelt on. So <laughs> that's, a, that's, in. A, that's something the Howards, like the Howard family has started doing around, around the house. So, <laughs> so we get like yeah, my, in, little man, my little man at home, we got the strapped. I he thought that was a pretty good celebration. So hopefully we'll see some of that uh, this fall. So we talked about him at Mississippi State. Let's take a look at what he's been doing here at ROTAs wearing the brown and orange. What have you seen from MJ out there on the field? Yeah, so got a couple clips for us to watch. This is actually today when we went out to, uh, to practice, got two clips. And you'll see MJ's down here, 23, down at the bottom of the screen. We're pressed up, um, playing man coverage, right? We got a middle field safety. And what you can see here, you know, you got three guys on the other side, one guy down here, so he's, he's matched up one-on-one. -on -one. And something that we, all, we liked with MJ is obviously his length um, and ability to press. Um, he has extremely long arms, I think 33-inch arms. And the way that we press, you know, using those hands, getting hands on is su super important. And what you can see here is this receiver like recognizes his length, right? And just by him standing there, he disrupts himself. Watch, so watch the receiver. Because he bows it so far inside. Because he bows it so far inside, which is what we're doing. We're, when, we cut, when we step down to press, we're trying to disrupt timing and space. So right here, he disrupts him a good four or five yards off of a, a vertical release, which is good. And then right here, I think what, what I've really liked with MJ, he's very coachable, very teachable, but you know, we talk to them about understanding by us putting ourselves in this press position, he cuts his route tree in half. He's gonna tell us what type of routes he's gonna run by his release. So as soon as he runs inside, we're thinking two routes, all right? He can run a, a dig cut or a seven cut. And we're going to be in that low hip position and we talk about slipping the dig being low so we can activate the post safety which is richard LeCount. so if that ball gets there but you can see you know disrupts gets hands on stays tight nice and sticky we got a third and five so if this ball's thrown right here he's going to be able to contest it knock it down uh, or if anything get the ball lifted to the safety who can end up helping him on the over and when you're at practice, just so to take the people kind of in the camera here, you're just cut off right now, but you're standing probably around the goal line if, if in the screen if we got the full field right there. What are you looking at as you're watching your players? And, for example, watching MJ on this one as these concepts unfold and you see how your players react to it. Right. I, how, I've always liked the, the back-end view just because I can get a feel for what everybody's doing. And it's almost like the opposite view of the quarterback. So it's like seeing the unit as – um, as a group, how are we lined up? Uh, what are the adjustments? What are the, uh, the split issues? Making sure we can communicate. And when I'm back there, I can hear what they're all saying, which is something that I appreciate. But you can also see from that angle, you can start seeing leverages, which are so, so important. Are you inside? Are you outside? How far outside? How far inside? Um, but that's something I like to see. So then we can, you know, as, as a coach, I want to give them instant feedback. So if I see something that we can change, adjust, get better at, as soon as the play's over, I'll run down and, and try to get them that coaching point. Okay, here we go. So we got third and goal here. Uh, they're in a three by one formation. Um, we call it a one by three, honestly, because it's the tight ends over here. So what you're going to see is MJ's matched up on the tight end. Uh, we're stepping down from a too high shell into a single safety rotation. So essentially what we're doing is, is Ronnie is matching up on the back and then MJ is matching up on the tight end, which, you know, something that we like about MJ is, you know, his length, being a bigger body, he matches up on these tight ends really well. So you can see here, you know, in the, down here in the goal line, we wanna make, make sure we're body on body as they hit the front line. And then being able to slide and connect and slip that under and undercut that throw. So I think what's really been 
awesome about working with MJ is he's been able to soak up all the little details of, of what we talk about, but like situational awareness, right? When we're down here in the red zone, everything plays different. You don't have a bunch of grass down the field. You can't get run by. Uh, this 12th defender, which is the back line, yep. we can use them. So we want to use them. So on these, on these routes, um, we never want to be in a position where we're top shoulder. Right, so we want to undercut everything. So people that have played basketball before, I always think of it like ball you man. Yeah. It's the same thing here. You want the quarterback, you, and then your man. So you want to be able to slip it and be in that. So if he does throw like a, a sh shoulder level throw that we can end up playing it. And what stands out to me about this one as well, something that we saw in the college tape is his ability to close. Because if you go on the release on that initial chuck, Chief creates a, a little bit of space, right? But his ability right there to get back there forces that throw to be high, and he closes that pretty quickly that if it was low, he's probably going to get his hands on the ball. Right, absolutely. So if we get a good, good throw, you know, we're expecting um, top shelf throws on the back line, and he's able to go up there and get it and be able to contest that against a bigger body. So we saw a guy in college, a lot of nice traits. And now when you get to the NFL, I always say your position coach is as important as anything in your development. And frankly, he's got a great one in yourself, Brandon Lynch, to kind of get this out of him. But it seems like we're seeing him take some of what he showed in college already here to the field with the Browns, which has to be exciting for you. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we want to do. We want to put them in situations where they can be successful. And that's why uh, the scouting is so important is to see what kind of player he is, what are those matchups that – um, he's favorable in and then trying to put him in, in those situations to be successful. And listen, we're in a situation to be successful wearing these hoodies because quite frankly, sir, they are incredible. Just like you, Coach, thanks so much for being with us here. Taking a look at MJ Emerson on another edition of the Browns Breakdown. Appreciate the opportunity.